Continuing on in section 1.6, in example 4, solving absolute value inequalities if our absolute value is less than a number. Uh, so what we're looking at here, guys, is our absolute value, we want it to be less than 5. And remember, absolute value is a distance away from 0. So our options are any of these values, but that distance could also be on the negative side within 5 units of 0. So anything in between negative 5 and 5. And we're, when we're talking in between, we're talking and inequalities. It has to work for both. It has to be greater than negative 5 and less than 5. So when we see a less than, I'm going to remember it as less than, so that we remember that it's an and inequality. Here we're going to take whatever's inside our absolute value how it's written, less than 5. And just like with equations, whatever's inside there could have also been the opposite uh, in order to make this true. So when I change it to be a negative 5, anytime we multiply or divide by a negative number, we have to flip our inequality so it becomes greater than. And again, this is an and inequality. And I'll show you guys some more ways to know that it's an and here in a little bit. So just like with equations, again, uh, whatever's inside our absolute value could have been 5 or it could have been negative 5. And in order to change it to be a negative 5 with an inequality, it's like we multiplied or divided by a negative number. We took the opposite, so we need to take the opposite sign as well. Uh, so here, I'm going to go ahead and solve each inequality. First, I'm going to add or subtract and then multiply or divide. Add or subtract. multiply or divide. And again, we said this is an and, but if we weren't sure, we could look here and say, are there any numbers that are less than 3 and greater than negative 2? Yeah, numbers like 0, for example, is one. So since there are numbers that work for both, it's an and. Uh, if we don't wanted numbers less than negative 2, but also greater than 3 if our signs were opposites, there aren't any numbers that work for both of those. So then it would have had to have been an or. So here we're going to keep it the way it is. We also could have graphed each inequality. So here at 3, I'm going to put a circle. And I want numbers that are less than 3, like 2 and 0. Uh, at negative 2, I want numbers that are greater than negative 2, like negative 1 and 0. So here from our graph, since we have the things in between, that means it's an and as well. So we could have seen it from our graph. We could have thought about, hey, are there numbers that work for both of these? Or we could have uh, sought from our inequality itself and then either drawn a picture or remember that less than means it's going to be an and. And that and or or is very important because it tells us two different things about our graph. So feel free, feel free to pause here and give this a try if you'd like. Again, I'm going to take whatever's inside my absolute value. How it's written could have been less than or equal to 8. I'm going to take whatever's inside my absolute value. And in order for that to be true, uh, whatever's inside could have been negative 8 as well. And if I take the opposite of my number, I have to take the opposite inequality. Here's a little spoiler alert. Every single time with absolute value inequalities, our inequalities are going to be different. So whether we start with less than and then make the other greater than, or we start with greater than and make the other less than, every single time they're going to be different. And because we started with a less than, uh, this is going to be an and. And again, you could have picked that out from a graph uh, or theoretically based off your values. So we could have done it numerically, graphically. Uh, algebraically, a lot of different options here. So go ahead and solve each inequality first by adding or subtracting so that we get that variable term as the only term on that side. And then finish isolating that variable by multiplying or dividing. So all we have is our variable on the left side here. Now, as far as the graph goes, 
because it's an and, we only want things that work for both. So four, I'm going to fill in my circle because of the equal to line. I want numbers less than four, like three and zero, for example. Negative four thirds. <clears throat> circle there, and I'm going to fill it in because of the little equal to line. I want numbers greater than negative four thirds, like negative one and zero. So again, it's an and, we're going to shade in between. It's telling us that our values have to be in between negative four thirds and zero. Uh, one other spoiler alert here, guys. Our dots are either going to be both closed or both open, like above. They're never in absolute value going to be one open and one closed because we just changed our inequality here uh, to be the opposite. Um, so if we switch it to be great from greater than to less than or less than to greater than, the equal to part stays. So when our absolute value is less than a number, it means the solutions are in between the number and its opposite. This creates an AND statement. When our absolute value is greater than a number, it means the solutions are outside of the number and its opposite. This creates an OR statement. Uh, so an example of this would be for number 5. We want our absolute value to be greater than 6, which means we want that distance to be further away from 0 than 6 or equal to. The same is also true at negative six. We want it to be further away than six units there. Remember, this is six units regardless of which direction. And we want it to be greater than that six. So here they go opposite directions. They go out. It makes an or statement. It only has to work for one. So uh, we're gonna solve this the exact same way as we just did the ands. The only difference is we're gonna have an or statement. Uh, and so our graph is going to look different as well. We're going to take whatever's inside our absolute value. And the way that I remember this, and I know it's a stretch, guys, but great or. Okay, so if it's greater, I remember great or. If it's less than, I remember less than. So I take 2x plus 4, greater than or equal to 6. Great or. 2x plus 4. Uh, to change it to a negative 6, I do the opposite, which means I need the opposite inequality as well. I multiply to divide by a negative, so I have to flip my inequality. I'm going to go about solving this here. Subtract 4 and divide by 2. Subtract 4 and divide by 2. So I'm going to get x greater than or equal to 1 or x less than or equal to, sorry, uh, negative 5. And if you check here, are there any numbers greater than 1 that are also less than negative 5? No. So it can't be an and. It has to be an or. As far as our graph goes, at 1, circle, fill it in. I want numbers greater than 1, like 2, for example. And at negative 5, I have a circle I'm going to fill in. We want numbers less than negative 5, like negative 6, for example. So uh, I'm going to fill in my things here, uh, my branches. Since it's opposite, we know it's an or. Or, since it's an or, we know they go opposite. Uh, however it works for 1, works for the whole thing, whether it doesn't have to be for both. So for you to pause here and give this one a try if you'd like. I'm going to take whatever's inside my inequality, or my absolute value, sorry, with the inequality that's given to me. Or whatever's inside could have been the opposite. It could have been a negative 15, but in order to change to the opposite here, I had to change my inequality as well. So again, I have one greater than, one less than. Great or, so this is going to be an or. Solve each inequality by subtracting first. And then dividing. Again, we can check here, are there any numbers greater than one 
but also less than negative 5. No, there aren't, so it has to be an or. But we could also check it graphically. I want numbers greater than 1, like 2, for example, and numbers less than negative 5, like negative 6, for example. So they go out, which tells us it's an or. So lots of different ways that we can check that here. The take note on page 44 summarizes the solutions of absolute value statements that we've been talking about. Uh, less than means uh, and, great to or means or, um, and then has their graphs there as well. A manufactured item's actual measurements and its target measurements can differ by a certain amount called tolerance in order for it to still be accepted. Anything more than that uh, and the part has to be fixed or the whatever it happens to be uh, can't be used. But if it's within a certain amount called tolerance, it's a little bit of a give because not everything can be exactly that amount. Uh, tolerance is half the difference of the maximum and minimum accepted values. We can use absolute value inequalities to describe this tolerance. So in car racing, a car must meet specific dimensions to enter a race. Officials use uh, a template to ensure these specifications are met. What absolute value inequality describes heights of the model of race cars shown on page 45 within the indicated tolerance? So uh, on page 45, it tells us that the desired height is 52 inches. The minimum is 51 inches and the maximum is 53 inches. So what they're saying is we want it to be 52 inches. It can go up to 53 inches, it can go down to 51 inches. And this amount of difference here or here is called our tolerance half the difference between the maximum and the minimum or the amount from our maximum to what we want and our minimum to what we want and here that tolerance from 52 to 53 is one inch from 51 to 52 is one inch so uh, we can set this up as an absolute value inequality because it can be anywhere between zero and one inches away and this looks like an and inequality because it's in between those middle so less than or equal to one inch is our uh, height. And to find the height, or the how much it's off, we take the height that we measure minus our desired height. And this right here is the absolute value inequality that'll give us a tolerance of uh, less than or equal to one inch uh, with a desired height of 52 inches. So a formula type thing here, guys, and we can do 52 minus h or h minus 52, does not matter. So our measured, that's our variable, minus our desired, that's our goal number, inside our absolute values is less than or equal to our tolerance. Now, suppose the least allowable height of the race car in example 6 was 52 inches and the desirable height was 52 and a half inches. What absolute value inequality describes height of the model of race cars shown within the indicated tolerance? So 52 was our low end, and 52.5 is how much we want. So our tolerance is how much difference is in between here, which is half an inch. So our tolerance is half an inch, and we take our measured height minus our desired height, which is 52 and a half. And it doesn't matter which way we subtract there because we're going to take the absolute value. So as long as the absolute value is within a half inch, um, so anything between 52 and 53 inches will work. Quick recap here, an absolute value quantity is non-negative. Since opposites have the same absolute value, an absolute value equation can have two solutions. Absolute value inequalities can be written as compound inequalities without absolute value signs. And that's all I have for section 1.6.